Praise the Lord, everyone. Here we are. We're um, we're on uh, doing Galatians, the last couple of chapters of it. This is from March the 1st, 2023, on a Wednesday in our Zoom meeting. And it's about being free in Christ. And um, the, the first four chapters are basically talking about how we're not saved by our own works or by trying to keep the law of the Old Testament. We're only saved by grace, by faith in Christ. It's not that we don't do works. Works are supposed to be part of our faith, but we aren't doing it to earn points of God because we're all sinners who need a saviour. In chapter five, he again starts off by saying, Paul, stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with a yoke of bondage. So um, we we need to stand fast in that liberty which God has given us in Christ. If we go back to try and be saved by going under the law and following rules and rituals, we'll find that we'll end up um, losing our way and get legalistic and uh, try and do it ourselves. But it's all about freedom in Christ. And I spoke on the night about that. That is the heart's cry of mankind. And God's put that into our hearts to want to be free. You know, think of some of the movies that have been made about Braveheart where, you know, uh, freedom, he cries out towards the end of that movie. It's all about a people wanting to be free. The American Revolution, same thing. You can think of others. World War II, it's about freedom. You know, and give me death or give me liberty. This is the cry of man. And, you know, like, and we find today that our freedoms are under threat from within our own nations, not just nations without anymore. Um, our governments have become more in control and cancer culture has censored freedom of speech and freedom of religion in certain contexts. And this has all happened because our nations have moved further away from God. So we've become slaves to sin. So God is trying to bring us back to the freedom that's in Christ. Look at cancel culture. Look at this woke movement that's around now. It keeps trying to tell us, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And you keep trying to do it if you're going down that path. And they change the rules all the time. And you can't keep up with it. And in the end, you end up doing your head in, trying to keep all the rules and regulations, just try and stay on the right side of the culture. And you can't do it. And it's a false, it's a false way of believing anyway. Most of the stuff they're doing is against what Christ wants for us as human beings. But there's that religious aspect of it too, where we can get entangled in false ways of believing. All right, so in Galatians 5, verse 2 and 4, he actually says, um, you know, I say to you that if you are circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And you have be, and verse 4 says, you have become estranged, estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. So he's nailed it right on the head here. This is what he's been saying in all the chapters before. But he's actually pointing it out. If you're trying to earn your way to heaven by belonging to a church and following all their legalistic type of stuff that they will put on you that's not required by God. Now, again, he's going to get into this and change tact here in a moment to say that he's not saying it's just a freedom for all here. And that's not what I'm saying either. But none of your attempts to be saved by your own efforts are going to work. You have to repent of your sins. You have to come to the cross and accept that he is the payment for your sin, that his blood is what covers you over. He was the sacrifice, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And you repenting of your sins and accepting that is the only way that you get right with God. Not your works, not your effort, not your charitable good deeds or anything like that. Though you should do those things because you're saved, because you love God, not as a way of being saved. So you look at the Jewish faith today, they have commentaries on commentaries about how to keep the law and please God and what this means and what that means. <clears throat> and that they tie themselves in knots to try and be holy and righteous and please God, but it doesn't work. All it does is create Pharisees and Sadducees like in the Old Testament in the time of Jesus. They, um, they become very self-righteous and very... Um, hard people and i think if you look at the the uh people that are uh, very uh, committed muslims they will also show you what the pharisee spirit is like it's a it's a very judgmental and a hard and there's no mercy in that in their spirit there that's what trying to do at your own strength because you will feel you're better than other people and those who don't match you 
are somehow not as good as you or don't deserve uh, uh, to exist as much as what you do. All right, so Galatians 5 and, and 6, it's, it's, it's faith working through love that saves us, faith in Jesus Christ. It's Christ who sets us free. All right. So then Paul changes direction a little bit because it's like he knew that people were going to say, oh, so if we don't have to, if we're not saved by the law, then you're saying we can sin and break the law and live evil lives and it doesn't matter because Jesus died on the cross and he's paid the price for us. And Paul is going to really address that right now. And um, what he does is, he gets into uh, talking about walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit, walking in the sinful nature, walking in the spirit. Now, Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21, it's uh, talking about the works of the flesh. And he says they're adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in time past, those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So all those who are saying, you know, today, well, I'm not under the law, I can live however I like. Paul has just nailed all these things on the head. and says, if you're going to live like that, then you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're going to uh, reap a harvest as he goes into in the next chapter, which we'll look at the next time, that you're going to reap a bitter harvest. So don't, don't think that you can sin and live however you want as a Christian and you're not going to reap the consequences, that you're not going to suffer for that. We are to live by the spirit and not according to the sinful nature. And then he, you know, um, he then goes on to say that, this is what the fruit of the spirit is. And in verses 22 and 23, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. Now governments don't make laws against these because these are all things that are good things and they don't harm people. If uh, you know a wicked government might come along and say, well, we're not going to allow you to do this stuff. But honestly, most people and most governments, if you do this type of thing, they're going to, um, you know, that's going to be uh, a good thing for the, for, the, for the community. And this is the fruit of the spirit. This is how God wants us to live. Just because we're not under the law doesn't mean that we can live however we want and break God's commandments. No, we're still sinning if we break the commandments. And that's why Jesus had to come because we're sinners. But he also, then when he fills us with his Holy Spirit, he begins to build the fruit of the Spirit in us, causes it to grow. And we need to be, you know, loving to people and being gentle to others and have that self-control and all these things that are here. All right? It's, um, it's as we surrender ourselves and our lives to God. It's not even our own efforts so much to do it, though we, you know, we do put effort into it, if you like. But ultimately, it's after all we've done, then God does it, basically. Often I find we try and try and try sometimes to be everything we should be. And then we say, oh, God, I can't do it. Take over. And, that, and that's when it seems to fall into place. But we are to live holy lives under God. And these churches that teach it doesn't matter anymore because Jesus loves you. Yes, he does love you. But he says, um, you know, to that woman who got caught in adultery, go and sin no more. He didn't say, don't worry, it's all, you're not under the law anymore. No, he didn't say that. He said, go and sin no more. So we need to take that on board. All right, so there are two extremes in the church today. There's legalism, Christ plus works, rituals and laws and all this type of stuff that are not found in the Bible or, or, uh, or made harder, like what happens in the, the Jewish, com Jewish commentaries uh, some of the things they had there about the Sabbaths with the Pharisees, they made it more difficult than it had to be. They, they focused on things more than what they needed to, and then they left things that were more important undone, like love and mercy and grace. All right, but that, that's what happens in legalistic churches and legalistic religions. You become self-righteous. 
you uh, you you don't end up be, getting the righteousness of God because you're trying to do it yourself and not get it from Christ. He's the only one that can give it to you. Or there's cheap grace. You believe in Jesus and sin like the world. All right. So Paul is addressing both of these in Galatians five. Are you living in the the flesh, the sinful nature, or are you living in the spirit, the fruit of the spirit? So Paul is trying to bring us back to that. That's what Galatians 5 is basically all about. So um, I hope you've got something out of that uh, as we go into the next week. We'll be talking about Galatians chapter 6 and we'll be finishing the book of Galatians. So I invite you to come to our Wednesday night Zoom meetings and you can be blessed and learn a bit more about the Bible and also then you can share it with others. God bless you. Have a great day.